I'm Don Avery. I have the privilege of being the administrator of this hospital and have for the past five years. When I came here five years ago, um, one of the things that, uh, and there were several things I noted, but one of them was that our emergency department did not have full coverage for all the services that we offered. Um, we also didn't have a, uh, an active um, a PCI or a stenting program. We had had one and, and, and they were going through some changes. And, and I felt that the best thing we could do for this region was to improve our emergency services. I mean, if you were a paramedic, you didn't know, I mean, I'm sure you guys, uh, well, can we go to Fairview for this service or not this service or whatever. Uh, we didn't have surgery on call all the time. We didn't have GI on call. We didn't have cardiology on call. And, and today we do. Um, somebody asked me about a, uh, a program we in, in implemented here a few years ago, and they were asking me, I said, is it a successful program? And I said, it's a very successful program. They said, well, how much money do you make? I said, well, there's different ways of measuring success. I said, financially, it does very well, but that's not the big thing. I said, and I was telling them, I said, last year, um, two families that I'm aware of got to celebrate Christmas with a loved one who they might not otherwise have been able to celebrate Christmas. Um, we have uh, even a member of our medical staff uh, who a couple of years ago had a heart attack, came into our emergency department, and he would say that um, our cath lab and Dr. Vega are the reason he's alive today. Uh, and, and there's others like that, you know, maybe you feel that way, Mr. Moss. But, but I do believe that um, the, the, the team that we have at the hospital um, is as good as there is anywhere. I said this five years ago that, that we're not just a Dublin or Lawrence hospital. We're a hospital that serves an entire region. We are the rural referral hospital for middle Georgia. Um, we're the biggest hospital between Savannah and Macon. Um, we have not just I-16 here, but 441 and 80. We're kind of an intersection of, of sorts. And um, without the services we provide, there's a lot of people that uh, would not uh, be here today and families that would be uh, mourning a loss. Uh, and that's in a lot of different specialties, but, but I'm proud that we uh, last year did nearly 300 PCIs. Um, I mean, someone who came to our emergency department having an emergency, needing a stent, and didn't have to be transferred. A lot of those people wouldn't have survived the transfer. Um, and uh, I wish Dr. Vega was here, because Dr. Vega probably did the majority of those. Um, and, and we're very grateful to him and the service he provides us. Um, we have a, a full team uh, of, of other cardiologists and staff here. Um, uh, I like the fact that we're able to celebrate, uh, if you will, the victories, those who, um, and as, as we are today with, with James Mullis. The irony is, um, James' daughter is the director of our cath lab, as you all know. Um, and, and we kind of started this motto, I guess, I say we, when you're the administrator, you can take responsibility or credit for anybody else's great ideas. This was actually one of Tracy's ideas, and that is that we're neighbors treating neighbors, neighbors caring for neighbors, and we really are. I see that throughout the hospital. Um, the inpatient units will have uh, nurses and techs taking care of people that they know, that they go to church with, that they, you know, kids go to school together or whatever. Um, one of our first patients when we opened our pediatric floor uh, a couple of years ago was the son of one of the nurses on the pediatric patient. So. Uh, what you had there is what we had here, and that's families caring for families, and that happens a lot too, which is pretty special. It all starts actually before we even know what call is going on because you got to call 911. And 911 gets the information that we need to get there, get the first responders there. If there's something going on that needs to be done prior to, they can actually talk somebody through doing CPR on the phone. So, um, whether she wants me to point her out or not, um, my wife works at 911, so they really do start everything off. Um, but we get the information, we're on the way, the first responders are on the way. We're already trying to formulate in our mind what to expect when we get there. <clears throat> There's a bunch of times where what we're told and when we get there is completely different. Um, and this, your particular case that night, it was kind of funny. Uh, 911 told us that you were administered a nitro and your blood pressure bottomed out. <laughs> I called back and told the 911 operator to tell them not to give you no more nitro. <laughs> you didn't need another one. <clears throat> but um, we got there and um, <clears throat> we moved the patient to the truck and we can do a 12 lead. Um, <clears throat> from that point, we can sit there and look at it and interpret it to see whether or not they're having a um, heart attack, a myocardial infarction, whatever you want to call it, STEMI. Um, this particular night, Debbie happened to be there. After I printed it off, I showed it to her. <clears throat> Cath lab got activated before we even left the yard that night. 
Um, when we got to the ER and Dr. Vega and the rest of the cath team was there waiting so there was no delay in care. We went straight from the ER to the cath lab to get the intervention that was needed. So. We actually have a capability of transmitting those 12 leads. We go through training every year for uh, reading and interpreting the information off of it, but we also uh, transmit that to the ER so that the ER physician can actually see it, make his own interpretation of it to, to further enhance uh, pulling the trigger on the cath lab and having, having those, uh, those people on the way to the hospital. Uh, even before the patient gets here. So. Um, I'm Debbie. I'm the director of cardiology here in the hospital, and obviously this is my dad that we're talking about. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of history because it's not that we just brought him in having a heart attack. Um, he's been here several times, and although I could brag on cardiology all day long because I believe in them, um, several departments in this hospital and several people have touch not only his life but all of our lives. <laughs> okay, I'm not, not going to be emotional. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, on February 29, 2012, I brought my dad here having a heart attack. Uh, this was one of the first times I think that he had been in that much of an emergency situation. We did bring him to the cath lab. Um, I actually happened to be the nurse on call that night, and um, I had called someone else to come in and cover for me because they obviously don't want me being the nurse in that case while he's having a heart attack. Um, he recovered. He did very well. Uh, then on 3-13 of 13 this year, um, he called me and said that he had been passing some blood, so I brought him back to the emergency room, and um, he had a massive GI bleed. Uh, his hemoglobin when he came in was about 14. By the time he got to the OR, it was about 6. 6 is critical, life-threatening. Um, Dr. Cabias actually is the doctor who saw him, and I can't say enough about Dr. Cabias. I think he is a wonderful GI doctor. Um, I don't personally know him, or I didn't before this incident, but um, he's wonderful. He always speaks to me by name. He remembers my dad. He always asks me how he's doing. The OR was wonderful. CCU was wonderful. Um, and I know that people probably think because I work here that, you know, that makes some kind of difference in the care that he gets. But I see these people every day. And whether they know you or not, the care that they give is top notch. I mean, it's wonderful. So on 325 of 2013, which was only, what, 12 days after the GI bleed, I brought my dad back to the hospital. Um, he had had some shortness of breath at home and uh, had called me and said that, you know, he thought he needed to go ahead and come. And I know when he calls me that he's near death. So I try to respond very quickly. Um, I brought him once again to the emergency room. Uh, I had talked. I, I usually call one of my siblings, and then they usually call everybody else. And uh, so I had talked to Kim, my sister, that night. And normally, I mean, normally I come, we see what's going on, and then I call them, and then you know they'll come. But for some reason, she decided to get up. It was late, probably I guess about 12 o'clock. She decided to get up and come to the hospital. And so, um, did they more than happy, be more than happy to talk to you No, okay. but um, so this night was particularly bad, really, really bad. I actually thought that he was going to die, and I had never thought that before. Um, at one point, I started to cry, <laughs> and my sister said, "Do not cry." I'm telling you right now, do not cry. If you cry, he is going to think that he's dying. And I said, well, I think he's dying. <laughs> so, anyway, they had, talk, they had talked about transferring him to Macon this night. And I said, you know, I have no issue with him transferring to Macon. If that's what's in the best care, I completely agree. But let me at least talk to Dr. Baker on the phone because my page him. Um, let me talk to him and make sure that, you know, everybody's in agreement that this is what's best for him. So I talked to Dr. Vega, and I, I told him, you know, everything that was going on. And now it's about, I don't know, probably 2 o'clock in the morning. And um, he said, no, no. He said, I'm going to see him in the morning. I'll give some orders, and, uh, 
and I'll see him in the morning. So I said, okay, that sounds great. So I went back. Well, when I got back to his room, he had gone and had a CT scan and come back. And his breathing at this time was horrific. He was in complete respiratory distress. He was actually what I would call a respiratory code at that point in time. Um, I personally called respiratory, you know, come over, I need you now, right now. I mean, come right this minute. And uh, they, they came. Um, but I was panicked. I mean, I'm telling you, panicked. Like, I just, at that point, all your nursing skills go out the door. I mean, you're no longer a nurse. You know, this is my dad. I'm his daughter. I don't, I, I, he's going to die. And about that time, I turned around, and Dr. Vega walked into the emergency room, into his room. It was about 2.30, and I swear I could have kissed his feet at that point in time. I had never in my life been so happy to see somebody. When he walked in, I, I just was like, okay, it's going to be okay. And he immediately started spitting out orders, you know, get this, hang this, give that. It was about an hour to an hour and a half before we actually got him settled down. But he was fine. We took him up to the room, and I was like, okay. So this has got to be it. I mean, we have been here twice now in the last two weeks, almost on death's door, and we have got to be done. Well, on 4-6-2013, I got a phone call from my stepmom who said that he, um, his blood pressure was very, very low and that he just wasn't feeling right and that um, I needed to come over. I usually go by my dad's house about every day. So I had been there already earlier that day um, to check on and make sure he was all right, and he was. So I called Dr. Vega, and I just said, you know, my, my dad's blood pressure is really low. We probably need to stop giving him some of the blood pressure medicines. Um, and he said, yeah, uh, you know, go check on him, see how he's doing. So I got to his house, and he was unresponsive, um, laying on the couch. He moaned a little bit. Uh, I immediately called 911 at that point in time, and uh, I, I didn't know the whole story. I just knew what I saw. So I called 911. I told them that his blood pressure was really low, um, and they sent somebody out there. Um, of course, when you're on the other end, it is completely different. Um, it, it was forever. I mean, I felt like it was forever. Like, it had been three hours, and 911 still was not there. That's just how you feel. Uh, so, I, I did call 911 back, and by that time I had found out that he had taken two nitro, mm -hmm. and he had been having severe chest pain. So, of course, I get 911 on the phone, and the lady was like, well, he, tell him not to take any more nitro. <laughs> and I said, ma'am, I am a cardiac nurse. I understand that he should have taken the first two nitro. But, but they got there, and um, they, uh, of course, once they got there and realized that I was there, and we talked about the story, they got in the truck. He had come around a little bit by that time. Um, was talking a little bit more. Uh, his blood pressure, I think, had come up. We did the 12-lead EKG. I actually called Dr. Vega back. And um, he said, I'm at the hospital already. And I was like, okay. So when I say that, I, I mean, all of our cardiologists are great, every single one of them. Um, obviously, for me, this is personal, so Dr. Vega is wonderful. I mean, he has, he goes above and beyond. I mean, he answers my phone calls when I call him. I don't care if he's in Hilton Head. I don't care. I have Ingrid's number. Where is Ingrid? She's in here somewhere. I call her if, if I can't get him. Um, and they always respond to us. I mean, for him to walk into the hospital at 2.30 in the morning was just amazing. I mean, it was, it was amazing. It, it wasn't a STEMI. It wasn't like he was having a heart attack or he needed heart-related treatment. But he just knew. I mean, he, he knew by my voice to get up and come to the hospital. And if it weren't for him, I can honestly say that I don't think my dad would be here today. But um, like I said, our cardiac program is wonderful. I'll go back to that. When a patient comes in having a stemming, it's, it's like controlled chaos. Lots of things go on. Um, our door to balloon time right now is 54 minutes. HCA would like for you to be under 60. Um, the standard is below 90. We're at 54. Um, we re 
you know, we live in a very rural area. A lot of our employees live about 30 minutes out, and we still maintain a door to bloom time of 54 minutes. Um, I've never had anyone on our call team call and say they couldn't make it or not show up. Uh, I've never had, you know, a cardiologist not come. I mean, you know, if we can't get a hold of one cardiologist, we call another one, they come in. The program here is unbelievable. And the staff, they're wonderful. I mean, everybody, not just in cath lab, not just in cardiology, in CCU, in the emergency room, in the OR. Um, like I said, our lives have been touched by every department in this hospital in the last year. And I can't say enough about Fairview. I assure you that um, I, I choose Fairview. I choose Fairview not only for me, I choose Fairview for my family, I choose Fairview for my friends. Um, I know I work here, but I promise you that when you stand on the other side of the fence, it doesn't matter how well I know these people, if I didn't think that they could perform to the utmost of their ability, I would, I would pass this hospital and go to the next one. It's my family. That's not how I feel. I always come here, and I always will. I'd like to say that I think what makes this hospital what it is is the teamwork. It's for everybody. And you don't find that. It's just, I mean, me, even from food service up, come around and ask you what you want to eat. You know, it's just, like I said, it's every department. Of course, I'm sort of prejudiced to <laughs> the cath lab. <laughs> uh, and this, it's Debbie. It's not just these last weeks that I was up here. This has been going on for four or five years. I mean, I've got a place on the Alden Hall River, and she's come down there and made me get in the car and brought me here. And so, it's just been it's been a lot of things over the years. And Doctor Vega, look, I can't say enough. And I can thank him. He'll say, I'm just doing my job. That's what he'll say. So, let me say this is an honor for me, and I appreciate what Fairview has done for me and my family. And I appreciate each and every one who's here. And with that, I'll say thank you. Our sister facility at Coliseum has done these for a few years now and it's just an awesome opportunity for us to bring it back to why we're here. We're here for y'all, we're here for your family, and for you to have more birthdays. Mr. Mollis came in, he came in and uh, what we call pulmonary edema, his lungs were full of water and um, he was in pretty bad uh, distress uh, respiratory wise in the emergency room. At that time he was having a, a heart attack. Uh, uh, he has pretty advanced vascular disease. Um, the fact that we have uh, the ability to do cardiovascular emergency procedures in this hospital probably saved his life. He probably would not have had made it if we had to wait another hour to transportation to a tertiary center. Um, so the fact that we had that uh, probably means the reason he is here today. You know, uh, we were able to go in and had, like I stated, advanced vascular disease. We were able to stent the arteries with. It. Pretty very good results for the extent of the CC he had, and um, he's done extremely well since then. Uh, so, I mean, it was a, a fact that if we didn't have the service here, he probably would not be here today. Uh, and the fact that we have the service at this hospital probably meant that he is alive. You know, I've seen a lot of doctors, and and Dr. Vega, and, uh, he, he appears to be this humble, laid-back guy, and he is. But he's so passionate about one thing. If there's anything I could say about Dr. Vega is he is passionate about taking care of patients. Um, I've never seen a doctor that's more available, that he, I, he does not know how to say the word no, um, unless it's don't quit. Um, but he's willing to, I mean, the, I asked ask the hospitalist, you know, which of the cardiologists that's always available, that's always says yes. Um, my guess is he would have come in at 2.30 in the morning, even had it been somebody other than um, Debbie's father, because uh, he does that repeatedly. Um, and, and I appreciate that. Uh, as, a, as an administrator of a hospital, if, if I had, um, 
you know, every employee and every medical staff member had that uh, attitude. Whatever it takes to take care of the patient, we really wouldn't have issues. And I, and I do appreciate that. You see that every day. Those of you who work here, you see that uh, in Dr. Vega, and I appreciate that.